Hi everybody and welcome back to my backyard once again. Today, finally, I have the DJI Avata 2 Fly More Combo and I also got the DJI Remote Controller 3, which in my opinion is basically necessary if you want to do real flights on this drone. And inside the box you will find the care ring bag, which is quite thick but super, super high quality. DJI really knows how to make proper bags. I think they should start selling backpacks because sometimes they design the bags better than the gear. That's foreshadowing. And boom, you got your accessories up here and the gear is down there protected by foam separators. When you unbox it, it comes already wrapped in plastic, but I'm gonna be, I'm gonna come clean. I already tested the drone a little bit, so I know what to say in this review. In the Fly More Combo, you get four extra propellers, USB-C OTG cable, corrective lens holders. If you wear glasses, you put your lens inside here. Of course, you have to have one custom made. This is an additional forehead pad if the lenses sit too close to your eyes because now the goggles sit on your forehead and that's amazing. Hexagonal key to change propellers and adjust the sticks on your radio. Instructions and stickers. In the gear section you get the new motion controller 3, the new DJI goggles 3, I'm gonna talk about them later. A 3 slot quick charging hub for the Avata 2 batteries. You get two extra batteries, one is on the drone already, you can charge and also output 10 watts to recharge your phone or the radio or whatever. The batteries, they are 31.7 watt hours for S batteries. They are a little bit smaller than the Avata 1, which was 35 watt hours, but they're also lighter for this drone. And this is the DJI Remote Controller 3. It's not included in the box, which is a shame. And basically, it's not much different from the DJI Remote Controller 2. Basically, they removed the antenna and they made the sticks a couple millimeters longer. You cannot even tell looking at them. It doesn't have the heatsink on the back and it's a little bit lighter. That's all. The buttons are all in the same place. And before I talk about the drone, please remember to like, subscribe and comment on this video. Let me know what do you think about the Avata 2. And also, if you want to help the channel, remember to click the links down in the description below. Let's go. The drone is 385 grams, which is lighter than the 415 grams Avata 1. It's crazy because it's also bigger. It's actually 150 millimeter motor to motor. And what's crazy to me, it's wider than a 3.5 inches while still having three inches propellers like the old Avata. The drone is basically all made of good quality plastic from DJI, even the arms. And uh, I don't know, it feels a little bit more fragile than the old one. Because if you crash the wrong way, I know these ducks are gonna snap. And it's unibody, so you have to change the whole thing. I think you should activate DJI Care just in case because I don't know how repairable this thing is. The battery slots in like a magazine and you don't have to fiddle anymore with the connectors. The new design allows for easy access to the USB-C port and the micro SD card. And you can forget it open basically, it doesn't get mulched by the propellers anymore. The height sensor is the same but the visual positioning system has been updated and now you can not only see below the drone but also behind and a little bit on the sides which is amazing and it can save your ass when you are <laughs> tracking backwards. And finally let's talk about the best part of this drone, the camera and the O4 system. First of all you get a little bit better range, the O3 was already fantastic so everything extra I'm not complaining. But the camera they took it from the DJI Action 4 which is arguably better than a GoPro in my opinion. Bigger sensor, 1 over 1.3 inches, it has better dynamic range and much better low light capability and also it does 4K 60 4 by 3 aspect ratio which you can use in gyroflow. Finally we have a professional, semi-professional tool in a drone like this. And I'm especially happy because the old O3 system was fine enough but you always felt the lack of a real action cam on this drone and many people used to stick the action cam like this but finally this two had a baby and it's the Avata 2. And finally it's time to fly. I'm gonna start with the motion controller first so you can see how is the experience then I'm gonna throw this away and always use the proper radio. Let's go. So when you use the motion controller, you can see that you can use it as a TV remote where it uses the gyroscope. If you press two times the dial, it switches to this real view on the goggles. It's not uh, the best. You can see your hands, you can see what you're doing, but it's a little bit zoomed in and uh, I wish it was a wide angle camera because it's kind of useless like this. So they modified the controller from the old one 
Before, when you rotated without applying throttle, it used to rotate the drone. Now you have to apply a little bit of throttle, which I'm not a very big fan. But I guess if you lay the controller down, the drone doesn't start spinning, so maybe there is a reason for that. If you press forward, it goes forward. If you press backwards, it goes backwards. Very easily, left and right. And yeah, I don't know. Uh, today is an incredibly windy day, so you're gonna see a little bit of, uh, of shake here and there. I have the stock settings, rock steady en enabled, and I'm in uh, normal mode. I'm not used to it, of course, but you have to be very precise with your hand to do something. And I don't feel very safe using this uh, controller. Maybe with a little bit of uh, extra... Let's not damage my plant. With the joystick you can uh, go higher. But I don't know why someone would need to learn an entire different radio when we have a good one already, which is the standard with the, um, with the sticks. Look down, the dog is uh, digging a hole. Yo, can't you hear the drone? Go back. <laughs> okay, I fear the dog is gonna take my drone. And mind you that I already have experience with the old Avata and the motion controller because I wanted to try the experience for myself. And on the Mini 3 and the Mavic 3, again, I use this kind of radio. And yeah, my experience is it's a fun experience, maybe even if you use the uh, motion tracker on your head, just look at this. Head tracking. And now where you move your head, the drone is gonna move. And yeah, it's maybe a cooler experience this way. Because you can look down while you're flying. And for, an, for a person who never flown a drone or is new to FPV, wow. This is, uh, yeah, this is a pleasant experience for sure. Because you can look around and uh, it's like VR reality, you know? Wow. So let's disable this because it's nauseating. No let's put it in sport mode. There is a tiny bit of wind. This drone is not particularly fast. Yeah, I've seen it reach 55 kilometers per hour in sport. And going with the wind in full manual mode, it goes like uh, 120. So it's fine for a three inch, I guess. Now we are going 58 kilometers per hour, which is about your max speed. And yeah, for fun, as a toy, it's not bad to use this uh, radio. Le oh, oh my God, let me chicken chase with this radio. And this is an opportunity I cannot miss. And uh, I mean, people who regularly see this channel, I know this video is going to be seen by uh, not regular <laughs> FPV pilots, but they know how good I am around these bushes and how good I follow chicken. With this radio, it's not easy because uh, you don't have a fine control. And, and so my... I mean, what is the reason to use this radio if you don't have finer control? If, I mean, I'm recording a video, you see how, how robotic it is. I have to stop and I have to adjust and I, it's, I can, it's, it's so hard to track, you see. It's not smooth and it doesn't produce a good video. And this is the stock sub stabilization. In gyroflow, maybe it will be a little bit better, but uh, yeah. It's very hard uh, to use something that's in the air and it's moving. I don't know. And this also, I feel like it uh, gives you more probability of crashing because the movement is not very, very con controlled. You see, you have to stop, adjust, stop, adjust. It's fun for the first 10 minutes, but then you realize you're not gonna be able to do stuff properly and safely. It's just a gimmick, in my opinion. Talking about gimmicks, 
Easy Acro. Ah, I cannot uh, use uh, Easy Acro while I'm recording. That's, uh, that's a new one for me. Recording again, and now we are in Easy Acro mode. So with the joystick, you control what the drone does. So slide is the usual mode that goes up, down, left and right. With the dial, you control. This is the 180 drift. I'm scared. I'm scared of drones doing stuff automatically. But basically, if you activate this, it goes backwards, basically. Okay, I pass a subject and then, oh, I'm following the subject on <laughs> backwards. I mean, it's so much easier to do it uh, with your sticks. So easy acro doesn't work with sport mode. So you have to go very slow. Okay, now there is the tree. Oh, that's crazy and I almost crashed because it does the move automatically. I mean, how hard it is to just rotate the sticks. Practice three days and even a person who never flew is going to be able to do it. You don't need an automatic mode that lets you crash. In my opinion, this is total gimmick stuff. And it's, not, and it's never going to be precise enough for a good video to come out of it. This is a marketing stance and nothing else, in my opinion, because you cannot control how high it goes after that. You see? It's useless, in my opinion. Okay, and now to the most useless part, the Easy Acro Flip. This is like uh, those uh, 10 uh, bucks Chinese drones that you get, <laughs> buy from AliExpress. Whoa, it flips <laughs> when you press a button. <laughs> just like 10 bucks drones. It has no sense in a video. So when I talk about this drone, look at this. When I talk about this drone and its purpose, in my opinion, is to record videos first and then have fun later. And this is neither fun nor a good way of recording videos because it's totally useless. You cannot control where it goes. It's a gimmick and you're gonna be, even if you like it, you're gonna be exhausted with it in 10 minutes straight. You're not never gonna use it anymore. And also you cannot use the flip while you are uh, low on the ground. So even more use, useless. And these goggles, I hate them. I'm gonna talk about them later, but I hate them. <laughs> and finally, let's try the drone with a real input device. Okay, for this flight, I'm gonna use the 4 by 3 4K 50 FPS, so in D-Log, so I get the most image quality. And already, ah, uh, so much better. First of all, the drone is much lighter than the, it's much more silent and quieter than the Avata one. It doesn't make, it doesn't make that whiny sound that the old one make. Yeah, the D-Log on the Action 4 or O4 module is a little bit uh, washed out, but that's good because when you, edit, you have a lot of flexibility. Ah, so much better with this radio, so much better. And now I am in uh, the basic mode, basically. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I feel at home. I don't know if I can uh, pass through here. Yes, this stuff is so hard to do fluidly with the motion controller. And here it's just natural. Of course you need to learn how to do it. But it takes uh, maybe a few days and you're gonna be proficient. Because uh, it's not like a regular FPV drone where you have to manage the throttle. Here it just stays and if you can, you can leave it. You can learn very simply. Back, front, left, right. Easy. And then you start combining maneuvers and you learn. It's not hard. It's, it's not even challenging. It's uh, a regular... Uh, drone, like a Mavic, or stuff like that. Then, if you want to go a little bit faster, put it in sport mode. And now it goes a little bit faster. It goes up to 50 kilometers per hour, but you have much finer control and you can use the slider. Oh my God, the wind. You can use the slider on the back to look down, look up, but you have fine control of what you're doing. Wow. Yeah, the wind is not the best, really. And now let's try chasing chicken again. And this to make videos is so much better. It's crazy. You see? Yeah. <laughs> I'm starting to eat the leaves, but you see how much 
more fluid the movements are, it's crazy. Where are the chickens where I need them? Probably they went home. By the way, the transmission uh, power of this thing is uh, it's just crazy. Where are the chickens? Look at this. I mean, look at this, it's, it's crazy. With my other, my other drones, they start losing signal when I go back here. This one, yeah, is not the best, but it's crazy. It's like 15% uh, better than the O3 maybe, something like that. And I am behind the house back there, it's just crazy. So, there are like 40, 50 kilometers per hour wind uh, gushes today. One thing I don't like is it doesn't uh, lower. When you, are on the, when you are close to the ground, it's hard to make it go lower because it detects the ground and uh, it kind of prevents you to do that, even in sport mode. It's a little bit better, but it doesn't descend quick enough and there is no way of changing it. And this mod, mod is gonna be very useful indoors because, wow, because you have a much finer control what you're doing. You can chill out and uh, go very, very slow, show the plays. I like it. And also something that regular FPV drones cannot do, look up while you are filming. I mean, you have to build something specifically for it. Now, I'm not the best at doing that, but this drone can look high, very high and low. Oh my God, the wind. And low, very low. Look at this. Yeah, it doesn't show the frame so much like the old one. It's incredibly windy and the drone is acting up. So the stabilization on this drone is uh, questionable, but okay. I'm gonna fly Acro even if uh, it's not the best uh, environment to do that, but we gotta test stuff at, the <laughs> at their most. When you select Acro mode, you can uh, you see, you can select the camera angle beforehand. I suggest something around uh, 25 is gonna be fine. Okay, and now the question everybody was asking, how does it fly in Acro? And does it have the death roll? So, considering the crazy amount of wind we have today, I have to say it doesn't fly half bad for a three inch of course, it's not an incredible experience doing acro with this, but it's totally doable. And I have tested a few flights already. It doesn't have problems with uh, the yaw spin of that. You remember that? It doesn't have that anymore. It uh, shakes a little bit sometimes, but it doesn't drop off the, off the air completely. You see, it doesn't like when you do that. But also, probably you can hear the wind and you can see the high wind velocity thing. It doesn't like today. Yesterday it was doing it. Okay. But I mean, you're never gonna do this kind of stuff with a Navata probably. Because this is a drone for filming in my opinion and you don't drop your spins, <laughs> inverted your spins while you're filming. For split tests, it does it perfectly fine. Let's try to do a power loop, which maybe you can throw in. And okay, except from the wind, it does the power loop, no problem. You see? The old one would have uh, uh, <laughs> go, gone crazy and just death rolled. So max speed, considering we are at 50% battery, if you raise the camera angle against the wind, 60 kilometers per hour, it's a very strong wind. If you go with the wind, hundred, a hundred, hundred and ten, it depends. In normal condition, it's gonna do 90, a hundred. So it's uh, not a super fast drone and you're gonna drain the battery. You can see in the bottom, when you start pushing, two minutes, <laughs> it's not incredible to see, but we are also at Okay, 40 degree angle. So, 
It seems to fly a little bit better than the old one, but I feel like it has uh, quite less power, like 20% less grip. You see, it's not as powerful, as punchy as the old one. Maybe the, the rates have to be modified. But it's not an acro machine at all. If you want to fly, oh my god. Yeah, it does that sometimes when there is wind. So it's a shaky experience, but it's never totally out of control. I can also feel uh, the battery starting to sag a little bit. But uh, now there is no wind and the drone is behaving properly. I feel like now I have much better control of it. Also, I don't want to destroy it because I have a work coming and this drone will be incredibly helpful with that. So yeah, it flies much better, much better than the original, but it has less punch. So also when you recover from moves, it takes a little bit more. And I wish, yeah, you can see I'm not able to perform incredible maneuvers. Okay, low battery. Time for my final opinion on the DJI Avata 2. Starting from the bad stuff, the motion controller. And man, I do have a gripe with this thing. Not because, I mean, the, the controller in itself, it's a fun experience, maybe for the first 10 minutes. But I think it shouldn't exist first. And if it existed, it should have been an optional accessory and not provided stocks, stocks with any Avata. This should have been the stock. This is a much better input device, safer. I think it's better to pick up this one compared to this one, to be, to be proficient with this. And it's standard. After you learn this, you're gonna be able to fly any other drone. And if you fly any other drone, you don't have problem acclimating to this. While this one is new for everybody and is not the standard. But somehow DJI decided that this is super cool and you should have one and move your drone like this. Even if the video looks like it's on a rocking boat, it, it's just crap in my opinion. And you're not gonna be able to fly as precise by, this is so much more precise as an input because you have all the inputs separate by directions. This one, you have your hand in the air, maybe it's shaking, I don't know. I understand it's a marketing choice because if they made this optional, they will sell 10 of them, maybe. For rich people that want a toy, yeah, it's fun, I get it, but it's useless. <laughs> and again, if this was compatible with head tracking, and I don't know why is this not, this would have been the perfect, because you fly, using a regular control scheme and then look around and uh, there you have your experience. It's much better. We don't need these kind of things. It's just a novelty, it's just a gimmick. Especially with all the useless mods like the Easy Acro, which, okay, it's fun because people want to flip and they want to feel the flip. But it's just uh, gimmicks. Uh, you're going to use them 10 times and forget about them. And that's the shame about this drone. Uh, really, my biggest gripe with DJI is that they make the absolute best drones out there, like the Mavic 3 line, the Mini 4. It's incredible, super polished and super focused on what it has to do, while in the FPV space they treat it like a toy. And yeah, full of gimmicks, full of useless stuff to show the consumers. Consumers that, if they know DJI, are already accustomed to a regular radio. And since it's better, why not ditch this thing entirely and focus on what works and make it work better. That's my gripe with DJI. So if you're considering buying the DJI Avata 2 and not use it only as a toy, this is a must have. This will allow you to use the full potential of your drone, be precise, be safer, record incredibly better videos and also transition from a regular drone like a Mavic to a real FPV drone with throttle management, acro and stuff like that, manual mode, and it will allow you to transition gradually to that. The Avata 1 and the Avata 2, in my opinion, are also the best beginner drones out there because you can take it gradually to acro. And then this stuff is probably compatible with all the FPV drones out there. So you can even keep what you bought. And also if you crash, you have the DJI Care. So your investment is safe. A chicken just jumped on a wall down there. 
Time to gripe again about the DJI Goggles 3 that, in my opinion, feel like a downgrade compared to the DJI Goggles 2. Not the Integra, the Goggles 2, but probably also the Integra are better than the new ones. Let me explain why. First of all, the ergonomics. You, you can already see the issue. I know I have a few aftermarket parts on these goggles, but it's 15 bucks of aftermarket, aftermarket parts. 10 bucks modified foam. DJI could sell a lot of these different shapes for different phases. I mean, how hard is it to make a replaceable battery, but with a holder, so you can have it on the back and not have wires hanging down, and a short wire. How hard is it to make a goggle like that? And li like this, you, I put this with one hand, I don't need anything else. There is the elastic strap, boom, stays on there. It doesn't move. I've been on running carts with these goggles and I can pilot, I can see it's so useful. And then see the ambient, boom, back in flying, talk to someone, back to flying. I don't need to adjust anything. It's amazing. And also the screen in this one are a little bit bigger. It's like the screens in the uh, DJI Goggles 3 are like 80% of the screens in here. I know some people were not able to view the whole frame, but I think it's better to have bigger screens anyways that you can crop a little bit if you don't see the whole frame. This, I, I, I saw the whole frame in here and I'm limited to see a smaller picture. How are they an upgrade? I understand that these were much more expensive than the Google Street to make, and they are trying to keep prices down. But come on, make a pro version at least, because I'm now used to having bigger screens and I miss that in the new goggles. And these are not yet compatible with the Avata 2. I mean, look at this. What the hell <laughs> is this thing? I mean, it works, but it's itchy on my face. It's a sweaty nightmare and it has often some light leakage coming from this channel right here. I'm not a fan of it. And when you try putting them with one hand, it's, it's cumbersome. You need two hands and then you need to adjust every time you remove them and put them back, you need to adjust them. This thing doesn't hold the position very nice. At the same time, it doesn't swivel all the way up. This is the max. I wish it will do like this, so you can keep it there, not change the position of the forehead guard, but you know, like soldering masks, you are doing something, uh, propping up the drone, talking to someone, and then when you're ready, boom, put it, up, put it back. I don't know why it doesn't swivel more than this. And it's just confusing to me. Also, this is nitpicky, but the goggles are not stable on my head. And if I have to be on a car, following another car, I don't see as good as with the old ones. Also, this crap right here makes the goggles a little bit less portable and a lot more fragile, because if you put them in your backpack, you have stuff pressing on it, I fear it's gonna snap. Also, the old goggles came with lens protectors. Not this one, but the stock one. This one don't come with anything, so when you put the battery like this, you have the battery grinding on the lenses. You can expose the lenses to the sun, and there is nothing to cover them. I mean, how hard is it to provide a little piece of foam that you can put inside the goggles and protect the lenses from their own DJI battery? I don't understand what DJI is thinking sometimes. These goggles have front-facing cameras, so if you tap twice, you can see a real view of the world around you but it's very, very bad executed. It's a 50 millimeter lens. That's, uh, you can barely see your hands. The screen on the goggles is super small, so it's like seeing through a corridor and it's not useful at all. It's a solution to a problem that wouldn't exist if they <laughs> created a good swiveling mechanism. Still one hand, but raise the goggles and put them back on. I don't know. It's, uh, it's just uh, the money is spent on the wrong parts. Save the money from the cameras, give us a better foam pad or uh, ergonomics, a better screen inside. That's it. I hope DJI makes an update for the goggles too, to make them compatible with the Avata 2 and with all the O4 units coming up. And finally, let's talk about the good part. The DJI Avata 2 is definitely an improvement over the Avata 1, starting off from the camera, which is way better and arguably better than a GoPro. Now I don't have remorse of not having an action cam on it anymore. And if you're doing Cinebook work, consider this one because it's super versatile. You can fly slow indoors, 
fast outdoors, slow outdoors. You can do a little bit of long range with a three inch and the battery, if you go slow, lasts uh, forever, like 22 minutes. It's improved over the one, but if you start pushing, it's mostly the same time you can be up in the air. And um, yeah, it's lighter, it's more silent, and the range is just crazy. The image transmission is perfect. Yeah, I like this drone a lot, and for work, I think it's a very, very compelling option. It's a tiny bit wider than the Avata, but seems to be more stable and better tuned. When you fly Acro, it's much smoother than the original Avata. It doesn't have the dirt roll, which is amazing, so I can finally trust it. And uh, it just has a lack of acceleration. It doesn't push super, super fast. You need some time, but I mean, this is a three inch drone cine whoop. You don't need to be doing uh, bando bashing and crazy aggro. Also because it feels like it is a little bit more uh, brittle than the original Avada. To recap everything, the drone is very good. The radio is the same as last time, it's fine enough. The goggles three kind of suck. They are a downgrade from last time and the DJI motion controller is useless. And that's all for today. Remember to like, subscribe and comment on this video. Let me know what do you think about my opinions on this drone and about the gear it comes with. And as always, if you want to buy something, help the channel by clicking on the links down below. Thank you so much. Stay safe. Happy flying. Bye.